Hey guys, we're in Ezekiel 23 in the contemporary English version. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may your blessings of peace and love and happiness be upon everyone who watches these videos. And please help us understand the wisdom and knowledge that we retain today. And Lord, thank you um, that every day is new in you and that we can come to you every day with whatever we need and you never get tired of us or <laughs> thank you for always being there for us lord you're so awesome and we love you and we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and we give you glory jesus and we pray and ask these things in your name so be it okay Ezekiel 23, two sinful sisters. I don't know how YouTube like captures the picture that goes on to the videos, but I don't like, <laughs> I don't know. I try and smile at the beginning, hoping they will capture that picture, but they capture ones where my tongue's sticking out of my mouth. <laughs> okay, two sinful sisters. <clears throat> the Lord said, Ezekiel, son of man, listen to this story about two sisters. While they were young and living in Egypt, they became prostitutes. The older one was named Ahola, which stands for Samaria. The younger one was Oholaba, which stands for Jerusalem. After the nation of Israel was divided, the northern kingdom was called Israel and the southern kingdom was called Judah. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom and Jerusalem was the capital of the southern kingdom. Okay, so they became my wives and gave birth to my children. Even though Ahola was my wife, she continued to be a prostitute and chased after Assyrian lovers. She offered herself to soldiers in purple uniforms, handsome, high-ranking officers, and cavalry troops. She had sex with all the important Assyrian officials and even worshipped their disgusting idols. Once she started doing these things in Egypt, she never stopped. Men slept with her and she was always ready for sex. So I gave a whole lot to the Assyrian lovers she wanted so badly. They ripped off her clothes, then captured her children and killed her. Women everywhere talked about what had happened to Ahola. Aholaba saw all this, but she was more sinful and wanted sex more than her sister Ahola ever did. Aholaba also chased after good-looking Assyrian officers, uniformed soldiers, and cavalry troops. Just like her sister, she did vulgar things. But Aholaba behaved worse than her sister. Aholaba saw images of Babylonian men carved into walls and painted red. They had belts around their waists and large turbans on their heads, and they reminded her of Babylonian cavalry officers. As soon as she looked at them, she wanted to have sex with them. And so she sent messengers to bring them to her. Men from Babylonia came and had sex with her so many times that she got disgusted with them. She let everyone see her naked body and didn't care if they knew she was a prostitute. That's why I turned my back on her, just as I had done with her older sister. Aholaba didn't stop there but became even more immoral and acted as she had back in Egypt. She eagerly wanted to go to bed with Egyptian men who were famous for their sexual powers. And she longed for the days when she was a young prostitute when men enjoyed caressing her body. The Lord will punish Aholaba. The Lord God said, Aholaba, that is Jerusalem, Though you no longer want to be around your lovers, they will surround you like enemies when I turn them against you. I will gather all the handsome young officials and the high-ranking cavalry officers from Babylonia and Assyria, as well as from the Chaldean tribes of Pecod, 
Shoah, and Koah. Their large armies will come from the north with weapons, with chariots and wagons carrying weapons. They will wear shields and helmets and will surround you, and I will let them judge and sentence you <clears throat> according to their own laws. I am angry with you, so I will let them be very cruel. They will cut off your nose and ears. They will kill your children and burn alive anyone in your family who survives. Your clothes and jewelry will be torn off. I will stop your wickedness and the prostitution you started back in Egypt. You will never want to think about those days again. I, the Lord God, am ready to hand you over to those hateful enemies that you find so disgusting. They will cruelly take away everything you have worked for and strip you naked. Then everyone will see you for the prostitute you really are. Your own vulgar sins have led to this. You were the one determined to have sex with men from other nations and to worship their idols. You've turned out no better than your older sister, and now you must drink from the cup filled with my anger. I, the Lord God, gave your sister a large, deep cup filled with my anger, and when you drink from that cup, you will be mocked and insulted. You will end up drunk and devastated because that cup is filled with horror and ruin, but you must drink every drop. Then smash the cup and chew on its broken pieces. Use them to cut your breasts in sorrow. I, the Lord God, have spoken. You have completely rejected me, and so I promise that you will be punished for the disgusting things you did as a prostitute. The two sisters are condemned. The Lord said, Ezekiel, son of man, it's time for you to tell Ahola and Aholabah, that is Samaria and Jerusalem, Samaria and Jerusalem, that they are guilty. Remind them of their evil ways. They've been unfaithful by worshiping idols and they've committed murder by sacrificing my own children as offerings to idols. They came into my temple that same day and then made it unfit as a place to worship me. They've even stopped respecting the Sabbath. They sent messengers to attract men from far away. When those men arrived, the two sisters bathed themselves and put on eyeshadow and jewelry. They sat on a fancy couch and in front of them was a table for the olive oil and incense that had belonged to me. Their room was always filled with a noisy crowd of drunkards brought in from the desert. These men gave the women bracelets and beautiful crowns and I noticed that the men were eager to have sex with these women, though they were exhausted from being prostitutes. In fact, the men had sex over and over with Ahola and Aholabah, the two sinful sisters. But honest judges will someday accuse those two of murder and of being unfaithful because they are certainly guilty. So I, the Lord God, now say to these sisters, I will call together an angry mob that will abuse and rob you. They will stone you to death and cut you to pieces. They will kill your children and burn down your houses. I will get rid of sinful prostitution in this country so that women everywhere will be warned not to act as you have. You will be punished for becoming prostitutes and for worshiping idols. Then you will know that I am the Lord God. Okay, chapter 24. A cooking pot. Nine years after King Jehoiachin and the rest of us had been led away as prisoners to Babylonia, the Lord spoke to me on the 10th day of the 10th month, probably January of 588 BC. He said, Ezekiel, son of man, write down today's date because the king of Babylonia has just begun attacking the city of Jerusalem. Then tell my rebellious people, pour water in a cooking pot and set it over a fire. Oh, here's what the asterisk means. Okay, when an asterisk occurs before a verse number, it indicates that this verse and the following have been combined. So verses four and five have been combined. Okay, so pour water in a cooking pot and set it over a fire. Throw in the legs and shoulders of your finest sheep and put in the juicy bones. 
pile wood or stack the bones underneath the pot and let the meat and bones boil until they're done. These words mean that Jerusalem is doomed. The city is filled with murderers and is like an old rusty pot. The meat is taken out piece by piece and no one cares what happens to it. The people of Jerusalem murdered innocent people in the city and didn't even try to cover up the blood that flowed out on the hard ground. But I have seen that blood and it cries out for me to take revenge. I, the Lord God, will punish that city of violence. I will make a huge pile of firewood, so bring more wood and light it. Cook the meat and boil away the broth or mix the spices to let the bones scorch. Then set the empty pot over the hot coals until it's red hot. That will clean the pot and burn off the rust. I've tried everything else. Now the rust must be burned away. Jerusalem is so full of sin and evil that I can't get it clean, even though I've tried. It will stay filthy until I let loose my fierce anger against it. That time will certainly come, and when it does, I won't show the people of Jerusalem any pity or change my mind. They must be punished for the evil they have done. I, the Lord God, have spoken. Ezekiel's wife dies. The Lord said, Ezekiel, son of man, I will suddenly take the life of the person you love most, but I don't want you to complain or cry. Mourn in silence and don't show that you're grieving. Don't remove your turban or take off your sandals. Don't cover your face to show your sorrow or eat the food that mourners eat. The usual way people mourned was to remove anything worn on the head, to go barefoot, to cover their faces, and eat special food to show they were grieving. Okay, verse 18. One morning I was talking with the people as usual, and by sunset my wife was dead. The next day I did what the Lord had told me, and when people saw me, they asked, Why aren't you mourning for your wife? I answered, The Lord God says he's ready to destroy the temple in which you take such pride and which makes you feel so safe. Your children who now live in Jerusalem will be killed. Then you will do the same things I have done. You will leave your face uncovered and refuse to eat the food that mourners usually eat. You won't take off your turbans and your sandals. You won't cry or mourn, but all day long you will go around groaning because of your sins. I am a warning sign. Everything I have done, you will also do. And then you will know that the Lord God has made these things happen. The Lord said, Ezekiel, I will soon destroy the temple that makes everyone feel proud and safe, and I will take away their children as well. On that same day, someone will escape from the city and come to tell you what's happened. Then you will be able to speak again. And the two of you will talk. You will be a warning sign to the people, and they will know that I am the Lord. Okay, chapter 25. Judgment on Ammon. The Lord God said, Ezekiel, son of man, condemn the people of Ammon and tell them, you celebrated when my temple was destroyed, when Israel was defeated, and when my people were taken away as prisoners. Now I'm going to let you be conquered by tribes from the eastern desert. They will set up their camps in your land and eat your fruit and drink your milk. Your capital city of Rabbah will be nothing but pasture land for camels, and the rest of the country will be pastures for sheep. Then you will know that I am the Lord God. You hated Israel so much that you clapped and shouted and celebrated. And so I will hand you over to enemies who will rob you. I will completely destroy you. There won't be enough of your people left to be a nation ever again. And you will know that I, the Lord, have done these things. Judgment on Moab. The Lord God said, The people of Moab, or Moab and Edom, thought Judah was no different from any other nation. So I will let Moab's fortress towns along its border be attacked, including Beth, Jeshemoth, Baal, Meon, and Kiriathim. The same eastern desert tribes that invade Ammon will invade Moab, and just as Ammon will be forgotten forever, Moab will be punished. Then the people there will know that I am the Lord. Judgment on Edom. 
The Lord God then said, The people of Edom are guilty of taking revenge on Judah. So I will punish Edom by killing all its people and livestock. It will be an empty wasteland all the way from Teman to Dedan. I will send my own people to take revenge on the Edomites by making them feel my fierce anger. And when I punish them, they will know that I am the Lord God. Judgment on Philistia. The Lord God said, The cruel Philistines have taken revenge on their enemies over and over and have tried to destroy them. Now it's time, or now it's my turn to treat the Philistines as my enemies and to kill everyone living in their towns along the sea coast. Okay. The Hebrew text also has the name Cherethites, which was a group of people that lived just southeast of Philistia and was often identified with the Philistines. Okay. In my fierce anger, I will take revenge on them, and when I punish them, they will know that I am the Lord. Okay, chapter 26, Judgment on the City of Tyre. Eleven years, probably late in 587 BC, after King Jehoiachin and the rest of us had been led away as prisoners to Babylonia, the Lord spoke to me on the first day of the month. He said, Ezekiel, son of man, the people of the city of Tyre, which is one of the two major cities of Phoenicia, Sidon was the other, Okay, so Ezekiel, son of man, the people of the city of Tyre have celebrated Jerusalem's defeat by singing, Jerusalem has fallen. It used to be powerful, a center of trade. Now the city is shattered and we will take its place. Because the people of Tyre have sung that song, I have the following warning for them. I am the Lord God, and I am now your enemy. I will send nations to attack you like waves crashing against the shore. They will tear down your city walls and defense towers. I will sweep away the ruins until all that's left is you, of you is a bare rock where fishermen can dry their nets along the coast. I promise that you will be robbed and that the people who live in your towns along the coast will be killed. Then you will know that I am the Lord. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia is the world's most powerful king, and I will send him to attack you. He will march from the north with a powerful army, including horses and chariots and cavalry troops. First, he will attack your towns along the coast and kill the people who live there. Then he will build dirt ramps up to the top of your city walls and set up rows of shields around you. He will command some of his troops to use large wooden poles to beat down your walls, while others use iron rods to knock down your watchtowers. He will have so many horses that the dust they stir up will seem like a thick fog. And as his chariots and cavalry approach, even the walls will shake, especially when he proudly enters your ruined city. His troops will ride through your streets, killing people left and right, and your strong columns will crumble to the ground. The troops will steal your valuable possessions. They will break down your walls and crush your expensive houses. Then the stones and wood and all the remains will be dumped into the sea. You will have no reason to sing or play music on harps because I will turn you into a bare rock where fishermen can dry their nets and you will never rebuild your city. I, the Lord God, make this promise. Okay, verse 15, the people of the nations up and down the coast will shudder when they hear your screams and moans of death. The kings will step down from their thrones then take off their royal robes and fancy clothes and sit on the ground trembling. They will be so shocked at the news of your defeat that they will shake in fear and sing this funeral song. The great city beside the sea is destroyed. Its people once ruled the coast and terrified everyone there, but now tires and ruins and the people on the coast stare at it in horror and tremble in fear. I, the Lord God, will turn you into a ghost town. The ocean depths will rise over you and carry you down to the world of the dead, where you will join people of ancient times and towns ruined long ago. 
You will stay there and never again be a city filled with people. Where was Phoenicia? I think I saw like on National Geographic or the Discovery Channel once like I don't know. There's a bunch of cities that have fallen under the or that the Lord destroyed, I guess. I guess that's why they're underwater. Okay. Verse 21. You will die a horrible death. People will come looking for your city, but it will never be found. I, the Lord, have spoken. That's crazy. It's crazy that we still see today the ruins of ancient cities like under the ocean. That's the part I think is crazy. Okay. Um, I'm trying to decide if we should read another chapter or not. Okay, Ver or chapter 27, a funeral song for Tyre. The Lord said, Ezekiel, son of man, sing a funeral song for Tyre, the city that is built along the sea and that trades with nations along the coast. Tell the people of Tyre that the following message is from me. Tyre, you brag about your perfect beauty and your control of the sea. You are a ship built to, for, built to perfection. Builders use cypress trees from Mount Hermon to make your planks and a cedar tree from Lebanon for your tall mast. Oak trees from Bashan were shaped into oars. Pine trees from Cyprus were cut for your deck, which was then decorated with strips of ivory. The builders used fancy linen from Egypt for your sails so everyone could see you. Blue and purple cloth from Cyprus was used to shade your deck. Men from Sidon and Arvad did the rowing and your own skilled workers were the captains. Experienced men from Byblos, Byblos repaired any damages. Sailors from all over shopped at the stores in your port. Brave soldiers from Persia, Lydia, and Libya served in your navy, protecting you with shields and helmets and making you famous. Your guards came from Arvad and Cilicia, and men from Gamad stood watching your towers. With their weapons hung on your walls, your beauty was complete. Merchants from southern Spain, or Tarshish, which may have been a Phoenician city in southern Spain, traded silver, iron, tin, and lead for your products. The people of Greece, Tubal, and Meshech traded slaves and things made of bronze, and those from Beth Togermah traded workhorses, war horses, and mules. You also did business with people from Rhodes, or D Didan, and people from nations along the coast gave you I ivory and ebony, which is a valuable black wood, in exchange for your goods. Edom, or Syria, traded emeralds, purple cloth, embroidery, fine linen, coral, and rubies. Judah and Israel gave you their finest wheat, fancy figs, honey, olive oil, and spices in exchange for your merchandise. The people of Damascus saw what you had to offer and brought you wine from Halbon and wool from Zahar. Vidon and Javon near Uzal traded you iron and spices. The people of Dedan supplied you with saddle blankets, while people from Arabia and the rulers of Kedar traded lamb, sheep, and goats. Merchants from Sheba and Rama gave you excellent spices, precious stones, and gold in exchange for your products. You also did business with merchants from the cities of Haran, Cana, Eden, Sheba, Asher, and Kilmod, and they gave you expensive clothing, purple and embroidered cloth, brightly cut 
colored rugs and strong rope. Large seagoing ships carried your goods wherever they needed to go. Or ships of Tarshish, which may have been a Phoenician city in Spain, probably means large seagoing ships. Okay. You were like a ship loaded with heavy cargo and sailing across the sea, but you were wrecked by strong eastern winds. Everything on board was lost. Your valuable cargo, your sailors and carpenters, merchants and soldiers. The shouts of your drowning crew were heard on the shore. Every ship is deserted. Rowers and sailors and captains all stand on shore mourning for you. They show their sorrow by putting dust on their heads and rolling in ashes. They shave their heads and dress in sackcloth as they cry in despair. In their grief, they sing a funeral song for you. Tyre, you were greater than all other cities, but now you lie in silence at the bottom of the sea. Nations that received your merchandise were, were always pleased. Kings everywhere got rich from your costly goods, but now you are wrecked in the deep sea with your cargo and crew scattered everywhere. People living along the coast are shocked at the news. Their rulers are horrified and terror is written across their faces. The merchants of the world can't believe what happened. Your death was gruesome and you're gone forever. Okay, let's leave it there for now. Dear Heavenly Father, we're sorry when we sin, Lord, and make you angry. And we are thankful for you when you pity us and show us mercy and forgiveness and Lord, we do not want to end up like these countries. Please help all your believers be strong, Lord. Please send more harvest gatherers into the fields and um Help us spread your good news, Jesus, so that everyone may feel your love, your free love, and come to you and glorify you, Lord. We love you so much, and we pray and ask these things in your name, Jesus. So be it. Okay. God bless. I love you guys.